In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate the SwitchBot button presser and SwitchBot thermometer into Home Assistant. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit subscribe below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech and today we're going to be having a look at SwitchBot. The SwitchBot button presser and the SwitchBot thermometer to be precise and we're going to integrate them into Home Assistant. There are loads of videos out there doing reviews on the SwitchBot and all sorts of cool things you can do with them but none seem to tell you how to integrate it into Home Assistant so I'm going to fill that gap and show you today. Now I've been given a few SwitchBot devices by SwitchBot to do this video but they've also given me a few extras for you guys so if you stick around until the end, I'll show you how you can win one of two SwitchBot button pressers. So SwitchBot actually sent me the Hub Mini, as well as the button pressers and the thermometer, but you don't actually need that to integrate it with Home Assistant. The SwitchBot devices talk over Bluetooth to the Hub, and the Hub then talks over Wi-Fi and Internet to the clouds and the, the fairy people up there. But Home Assistant actually communicates to the SwitchBot devices directly through Bluetooth so it doesn't need the hub to work. The hub also has a built-in IR blaster, but you can't seem to integrate that with Home Assistant unfortunately, so we'll have to stick with the Broadlink. So the integration for the SwitchBot button presser is super simple. You're going to need your Home Assistant to have some form of Bluetooth capabilities. For me, running on a Raspberry Pi, that was built in, so I didn't need to worry about it. But if, you, if you're running on a different PC, then you may need to think about that more strongly. First of all, you're going to need to connect your button presser to the SwitchBot app. To do this, it's very simple. I opened the app, clicked through all the allow this, allow that, and then it appeared. I didn't even need to press a button or anything. Now we need to add it to Home Assistant, but first we need to get the MAC address. In the app, click the settings button next to the SwitchBot, and then click on the three little dots in the top corner. That should give us the BLE MAC address. We want this MAC address, not any Wi-Fi MAC address. We can now head over to Home Assistant. In here we're going to add a new switch. As you can see mine are listed in a separate file so we'll head over there first. We're going to add a new switch under the platform of SwitchBot and then we're going to add the MAC address that we can copy from our SwitchBot app. Now we can hit save and restart Home Assistant. Then our switch should appear. I have to say the response time isn't the quickest between Home Assistant and the SwitchBot. But given the fact that it runs over Bluetooth, and my SwitchBot is currently quite a long way away from my Home Assistant with the Bluetooth, I'm quite impressed with it. And it's a very strong little arm and you can do all sorts with it as I'm sure you've seen in other videos. Now we move on to the integration of the thermometer, or hydrometer, or meter with both the thermometer and the hydrometer. Anyway, unfortunately there isn't actually an integration for this yet. But there is a workaround. Unfortunately, that workaround requires a bit of hardware to act as a hub between your thermometer and your Home Assistant setup. For this, I've chosen to use a Raspberry Pi 0W. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, it's small and it's very cheap. This workaround uses a little script called SBM to MQTT and it works by extracting the Bluetooth data and then spitting it out as an MQTT packet for Home Assistant to read. This script is courtesy of Ron Schaefer and it's linked below so you can get it. So the first thing we need to do is set up our Raspberry Pi and connect it to the network. To do this I'm going to use Raspberry OS Lite so I'm going to download that straight from the Raspberry Pi website and then I'm going to use Etcher to etch it onto the SD card. So we select our image, we select our disk and then click flash and then we let it do its thing. Now we can jump over to desertbot.io for instructions on enabling the Wi-Fi and SSH. So with the SD card still in, we're going to create a new file. I'm going to use Atom to edit this file, but you can use whichever file editor you choose. In this first file, we add a single space, and then we save it as SSH. And we save that in the boot, or the root, of our SD card. This will enable SSH so we can remotely talk to and control our Pi over the network. Next, we need to set up the Wi-Fi. So we're going to copy this little bit of text over to a new file. We're going to make sure our country code is correct, so I'm changing mine to GB, and we enter our SSID and password. 
and then we save it as WPA underscore supplement dot conf. We can eject the card, put it into our Pi, and power it up. I'm now going to head over to my router to find out what IP address my Pi now has. This would be a good time to set a static IP address if that's something you want to do. Once done, we can head over to terminal so we can SSH into it. So we use the command SSH pi at 192.168.0.230 or whatever your IP address is that you've just found out or set. We then type yes because we want it to happen and we type the password which is raspberry by default. We can now head back over to the GitHub to find out what we need to do next. OK, so we need to make a few updates and install some new packages. So the first one, sudo at get update. Next, once that's happened, sudo at get upgrade. Note these will take a little while to go through and to work because they're downloading quite a lot of files. Now we follow the rest of the commands. So we're installing this Python 3 library, this blue PY library, and the MQTT library, following these commands. Once that's all done, then we can move on. Once they're downloading, feel free to download the clone of the GitHub so you have the files ready to go for later. Once it's all done, you can edit your config file. I suggest you do it whilst it's still on your computer in a file editor. So we're going to open up the sbm to mqtt underscore conf.py file. In here, we're going to add our mqtt broker and our username and password. This is my home assistant setup, so that's what I'm putting in there. Now we need to copy these files over. So for this, we need a new terminal window and we need to go into our downloads or wherever the files are. So we use cd downloads. Now we need to copy it. So we use the command scp, which is a copying command, sbm to mqtt.py, space, pi, at 192.168.0.230, or whatever it is, colon, and hit enter. And that should copy across. And we do the same for our sbm to mqtt underscore conf.py file. Now we jump back over to our SSH window, and we need to make our switchbot file. So we do mkdir, or make directory, switchbot, enter. And that should make the file. We then want to copy our two SBM files into this switchbot. So we do cp sbm to mqtt.py slash switchbot, enter. And that will move it. And then we do the same for our sbm to mqtt underscore conf.py. Once that's done, we can cd switchbot and that should take us straight into our switchbot file or folder even. Now everything's working we can test it out. We use the command sudo python3 sbm to mqtt.py enter and then it should print out the information about our switchbot so it'll give us our MAC address and then the data that it's received. We can then use an mqtt app to sniff out and find the packages so if we subscribe to the right topic which is switchbot meter slash whatever the MAC address is, then we should see that it spits out the right information. Now that works, we want to make sure the app runs every five minutes. So we go back to GitHub and copy that command. We use the command sudo nano slash etc slash contrab. And in here we should see a new file has opened. We scroll down to the bottom, or not quite the bottom, add a new line, and then we copy this bit of text over. And if you want it to happen more often or less often than every five minutes, then you just change the number five for a different number. Once we're happy, we exit, saving, and then we can reboot the Pi. Once it's rebooted, we should be able to see, using our MQTT app, that it spits out the information every five minutes. Once we're fully happy that everything works, we can head over to Home Assistant and integrate it. If we copy this bit of script or YAML from the GitHub, and then we head over to our config file. As you can see, we're adding sensors. So I'm going to list mine in a separate sensors file. So we're opening that up and we paste over the information from our GitHub. I'm going to remove the first line because that's listed in, in the main config file. And in here, we can see that it's taking a platform for MQTT and it's sniffing the messages. So we can rename this to whatever we want our switchbot to be called, whether that's location or whatever. And then we need to change the topic. We need to insert our BLE MAC address, which we got earlier, and we have used in the app to sniff it, into this topic. So we're sniffing in the right place. We can save it and restart Home Assistant. And then next time the switch runs, our information will go from unknown to the current value. 
and it will just update every five minutes, which is great. Now what you've all been waiting for, the competition. Very simple to enter. All you need to do is make sure you're subscribed on here and then follow, like, and comment on my SwitchBot giveaway on either Facebook or Instagram. I want you to comment with what you're going to use your SwitchBot for, the craziest idea. And the best idea, or the best two ideas, will each receive a SwitchBot. Of course, I'll judge it myself. Note, I'm only going to ship to mainland UK, so if you're outside of that, I'm sorry, but you get enough giveaways from other YouTubers. So there we go. The SwitchBot button presser and thermometer integrated into Home Assistant. Make sure you hit subscribe and click the bell icon below to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.